It's a very human thing to want a story with a start and an end, a birth and a death. But the river isn't worried by it. It is in a cycle with no beginning or end. The river is a response to its surroundings. Driven ebb and flow, light hearted, heavy weather. The river made us so. We were dormant, we were waterless from Wabin. It is true that the changeover from a purely agricultural to an industrial community began with the manufacture of wire about the 16th century and was followed by the introduction of linen making in the middle of the 17th century. But there is little doubt that Barnsley owes special thanks for her prosperity in the 20th century. But what really makes this town of ours tick? The answer is coal, coal and its byproducts. It is from the impurities left from coal after treating for coke, which mainly include coal tar, light oil and ammonia, are derived dyes, explosives, perfumes, antiseptic, plastic and man-made textiles. Before this date, it is feasible that our ancestors, while aware of the presence of the mineral, made no great effort to work it because they had a plentiful supply of wood near at hand, and which was easily obtained. Today, Barnsley is the centre of the Yorkshire Coalfield, which has the biggest potential in the country, and which provides employment for nearly half of the male population in the locality.
You were still on top of one of the massive pit heaps in the 1960s and looked along the river, you'd be able to see all the pits. Every two miles were a pit. There was the glassworks, the massive glassworks in Barnsley pumping all its pollutants into the river. There was the smoke and the, the chemical uh, miasma from Mamba's coking plant. All the houses and the buildings made of the local limestone were black. The houses were black. Everywhere was black. But the view along the river was like uh, an industrial hell. Smoke, the gas jets from Mamba's coking plant, dust blowing about. Not a very nice place to be. When we were kids, we all used to make trolleys, as everybody did from this area, with old uh, pram wheels and stuff, you know. And we'd go down on the big bridge down near the pit, ride the trolleys down and then go hunting for frogs. Anything you could catch alive, just about the only thing that were alive down there were frogs. And just roam around, playing as kids did, on the pit stacks, down by the river and everything. The thing was just so polluted the amount of stuff that were going in that river from, from industry, it were absolutely dead. Uh, when, when I was a kid, uh, we used to go down and play in the, in the stream. There was a field at the back of my mum's house. They went down to the field to what we call the orange water. And it, were, it was called the orange water because uh, the water was orange. It was a flow out from uh, Hickleton Main Colliery. And all the, uh, the red uh, ochre and all the... Uh, pollutants from the pit went straight into the stream which eventually wound its way down to the river down i mean we used to play quite happily in there i sometimes wonder now as i'm old what, what exactly we were uh, paddling about in there were no wildlife no insects no uh, frogs we used to see a frog very rarely on on the little stream that ran into it that didn't come from the pit that led down to the den where that joins the Dern is near where uh, Manvers' coking plant was. Uh, Manvers was actually covered by a sheen of petrochemical waste being spewed out by the coking plant. If you touch the stones and the rocks, they had a greasy feel to them, and any little puddles were covered in the, uh, the rainbow hue of petrol or other oil-based products. Looking back through my mind's eye from what I used to see from the top of Wath as a view is completely different to what I see now. The whole area's completely changed. The river's actually stunning. If you take time to walk down it on certain stretches, if you can, you know, wherever you can get to, and just take 10 minutes and sit down and watch it all, um, it's amazing. The whole area has totally regenerated and has, has come back to life. Since the rebirth of the river, we've seen a vast increase in biodiversity in plants, animals, birds, insects. Lots of different species have made a reappearance, making the river almost like it would have been in the 17th century. Birds like bittern, Avocet, bearded tit. We've got plants coming back in on old pit tips and on the new roads that have been built along the Dern. Marsh orchids, common spotted orchid, bee orchid, all along Manvers Way where the old coking plant used to be. We've got um, butterflies like marbled white butterfly that have recolonised the old pit tips up towards the uh, limestone. If you've set off from Barnsley now, you were, all the coal tips are covered in, in trees and grass. They've all been uh, revitalised in that way. 
along the Trans Pennine Trail that that uh, didn't used to exist. Another another great idea. And then a gurgling river f- full of wildlife and birds, and all the way back through to where the the Dern meets the Don at Denneviings. A marvelous experience for a naturalist compared to um, what we used to have in the fifties, uh, sixties, and seventies. An industrial wasteland. around the river is vastly different to its appearance 30 or 40 years ago. Now, a lovely place to be, a place that could almost be like it was in the 17th century, a place to live and a place to breathe and a place to walk, a vast difference. <laughs> 